And welcome to Around the Ozark Spotlight. Each week we uncover the stories behind the people who live and work here in Southwest Missouri. Those individuals with entrepreneurial spirit who work to better the lives of others or even put pen to paper to write books about the stories and history of the Ozarks and its people. I'm your host, Scott Meyer. Today we are exploring the world of food banks because it's that time of the year. And uh, here in the Ozarks with the Director of Communications for the Ozarks Food Harvest, Jordan Browning. Uh, welcome, Jordan. How are you? Doing well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's always good to see somebody in a in a sport coat these days. At least uh... <laughs> you caught me on a good day, I should say. <laughs> Is that right? Have, yeah, have we yeah. started dressing down since the pandemic? Is that? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's sometimes just the dress shirt. So I was happy that yeah that we happened to connect while I was wearing a blazer. <laughs> well, we made it more difficult once we put video with us. Uh, before you could you could do it in your uh, pajamas, but now mm-hmm. uh, now you got to have a little something going. Although it looks nice, you've got it set up with the plant in the background there. And, and uh, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> me, I just fog it out because it's bad enough to have to look at me without having to look at a brick wall behind me. But anyhow, <laughs> you know, here we come. Uh, we're, we're coming up on uh, the Christmas season. Uh, if you go to any store here in the Ozarks, you'll find that uh, that season started about, I don't know, three, four weeks ago. But uh, mm-hmm. with Christmas, obviously comes the pressures of Christmas and uh, certainly the pressure of the last couple of years of, you know, somewhere near 30 percent inflation. Uh, has really put the bind on people uh, making some difficult decisions. You know, is it food on the table? Is it gas in the car? Uh, You know, is it new books and stuff and and clothes for the kids? But nobody's closer to it than you uh, Mm -hmm. with Ozark's Food Harvest. So before we get into what your needs look like and and what's been happening, let's take people back just a a, a little bit if we can. And can you give us a little history on Ozark's Food Harvest and, and how in the heck you serve as many food banks as you do, uh, because it's a huge number. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for those who don't know, Ozarks Food Harvest is the Feeding America food bank for Southwest Missouri. So what we do is distribute about 21 million meals per year to more than 270 agencies. So that can be food pantries, feeding sites, shelters, things like that. And we work with all of these different organizations to Mm -hmm. try and provide food to families facing hunger across Southwest Missouri. And so right now, just for a ballpark idea, about one in five children and one in six adults face hunger in Southwest Missouri. And in our service area, that's higher than the state average. So it's a definite problem that has only increased as people are facing new issues in the year, as far as increased childcare expenses, increased housing expenses, and increased food expenses. 21 million meals? Yes. How is, that even, how is that even possible? <laughs> it is a logistical challenge. I can tell you that. Um, but we're lucky then that we have a large fleet of trucks that we are sending out each and every day across our service area. And mm-hmm. we have, a, as I said, a significant amount of agencies that are distributing food each and every week to make sure that we're meeting that meet, need in the community right now. So the food harvest is, in essence, a, a clearinghouse. Is that correct? So we, we're a distribution center for right. South Missouri. So yeah, as soon as the food is coming in, we are make sure that it's getting out as quickly as possible. I mean, just for a ballpark of idea of what we're doing on a weekly basis is we're having volunteers here um, every single week and we're sorting about 100,000 pounds of food per week so we can get it out the door as quickly as possible. Wow, that, that's amazing. Uh, you know, uh, getting back to your point of uh, one in five kids, uh, uh, you know, no one wants to see adults starve either, but you certainly don't want to see children uh, face that kind of a situation. Uh, is it getting worse? Is it getting better? Or is it simply that's just the way it is? It has unfortunately become worse in the past year. So previous to this, we were looking at stats of about one in seven children facing hunger. Mm-hmm. And so that is now upgraded to one in five. And the reason we're seeing those things is kind of the things we talked about as far as inflation of food and things like that. But a large portion of what's driving that, too, is so many of the children in the more rural sections of our 28 county service area. They're getting into you know really bad situations where the economy has just not improved since COVID. And mm-hmm. so those folks that were already struggling just were getting pushed down further and further, which is making it more difficult for people to get back on their feet. Wow. I, I, that's an incredible number. Uh so do you actually do you actually touch uh, these people yourselves or is it strictly dis- the distribution center for all these other food banks? 
Yeah, we definitely do. And that's through our various programs. So, I mean, the main bulk of what we do is the distribution to our agencies, but we also mm-hmm. have various programs like our mobile food pantry program. And that one's reserved for those more rural service areas where there may not even be a food pantry to distribute to within that mm-hmm. very rural county. You know, for example, somewhere maybe even like a Shannon County, Oregon County. Mm-hmm. And so we can take a truckload of food on a refrigerated truck and all we need is an empty parking lot to get access and distribute to that population. Um, we do it through our senior box program, our after school feeding sites and our summer school feeding sites. So there's a lot of varieties of ways where trying to tackle this issue to hit all those different population segments to make sure that no one's left out. You're hearing and seeing my guest today, Jordan Browning, Jordan, the uh, Director of Communications uh, for Ozark's Food Harvest. Uh, You know, we hear a lot about Ozark's Food Harvest, certainly this time of the year. I can't imagine that the only time you have a priority is in in and around the holidays. Uh, you you would be very correct. Yeah, we, we like to say around here is that hunger is a 365-day-a-year a issue. Um, and unfortunately for us, that demand has just continued to increase over the past mm-hmm. two years. I mean, during COVID, for example, we were serving about 50,000 unduplicated individuals each and every month. And now that's up to 70,000 each and every month. And, and so how many counties are we talking about? What, what uh, It's certainly not just the city of Springfield. So what, what are we talking about in terms of just the general area? Yeah, so we cover a 28 county service area here in southwest Missouri. So for a ballpark, we go all the way to the border of Arkansas. Um, we go as far east as uh, Oregon County and as far north as Taney County, or I'm sorry, as far north as Shannon County. Sure. Wow. So in total, how many counties? It's 28 county service area. 28 counties. Uh, it's just, a, it, it's a huge footprint. Uh, the, the, the food itself comes from purchasing or from donations or both? Yeah, it's a combination of both, yeah, public and private partnership. So the majority of the food that we get, probably about 50 to 60% is coming from donations from major retailers um, Mm -hmm. like Walmart, Pyramid Foods, and things like that. And then purchased product, we end up doing about 10 to 15% of our distribution for that. And that's trying to cover those gaps of things we may not see with distribution. So protein items, fresh produce items, dairy items, things Mm -hmm. that are get left out of the equation often. Sure. Uh, do you work uh, directly with uh, uh, dietitians on the kinds of foods that are available for folks? I mean, you know, sometimes you, you, you and I can't help but see this, you know, when I, when I do a lot of our shopping and mm-hmm. you see people load up a cart with uh, one could argue probably not a lot of things that are really good for them or, mm-hmm. or their kids. Uh, you know, a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of dry foods, a lot of uh, sugar, uh, you know, embellished foods. Uh, how do you protect against that? And, and what, what, what do you find people are looking for? I mean, do you, do you, do you see people coming, uh, wanting that stuff or is that, uh, do you go out of your way to not make that stuff available? Yeah. And so it's, it's kind of a difficult proposition that we do have a registered dietitian on staff and mm-hmm. yeah, we are very focused on making sure that we're sending out nutritionally sound food. I mean, for example, our weekend backpack program, that's the program that we serve to kiddos who are on the free and reduced lunch program that may not have access to meals over the weekend when they're out of school. Sure. And so for that one, we're actually specially selecting all of the meals that go in that to make sure it's fitting USDA nutrition guidelines as far as making sure the vegetable, fruit content, dairy content, and protein content are nutritionally sound because it's such a vital piece early on in a child's life to make sure we're setting them up for success with that nutrition guidelines. Oh, um, there's no question. No question. It's, it has everything to do with their ability to learn and and, uh, and grow. Yeah, exactly. And so, like I said, kind of with the purchase food product as well, that's trying to increase the amount of healthy food we're distributing that we may not sometimes see with our donations as far as high protein items and fresh produce items as well. Now, it's interesting, you know, you, you, you travel away from Springfield and you get into the hinterlands, if you will, of, of some of these counties where it's very desolate or there's just not a lot of people there. Certainly a lot of animals. <laughs> you see animals <laughs> all over the farms, but not necessarily a lot of people. How do you know where to go? Uh, are, are people contacting uh, the food harvest or uh, do you simply have people on staff that are aware of different situations? How do you how do you make that judgment of areas that don't have availability maybe? Uh, in, in their immediate area to a food bank, uh, yet you are able to make uh, those things happen? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So we actually have an entire department 
dedicated to going out in our service area to establish these partnerships with agencies. So that's our member services department. Mm -hmm. And they handle everything from seeking out agencies that may already be doing that work in the community so we can partner with them. Um, and also establishing partnerships with other retail partners to make sure that we can make those connections to make sure food isn't going to waste in that community, as mm -hmm. well as just checking in to make sure that all of the food that is going out of these distribution centers is safe and ready to consume for folks that are facing hunger. So it's a, a very wraparound process we try and do to make sure that the food that is going out is as safe and healthy as possible. Now, I heard a statistic just the other day that I think, uh, what was it, supermarkets end up throwing out about 35% of mm -hmm. of uh food on a on a weekly basis mm -hmm. uh, is that something that's taken into co uh, into consideration with the with the food harvest or is that a whole nother thing yeah i mean that's a that's a big part of what we try and do when we're working with retail partners is mm -hmm. making sure that we're educating them as far as you know there is a place for this food to go to make sure it has second life and that's a big part of what we try and educate folks as far as the food that they're getting as well because sometimes you know you may see something where someone says I got expired food from this organization. Mm -hmm. And the big point we try to make there is that's a more of a marketing date as far as a best buy, but doesn't mean that sure. the food is bad once it goes past that date. Right. And that allows us to give that food second life. And a, and a really cool part of what we do as well is if food happens to get here that we still can't send out in the community is we work with local hog farmers to make sure that that food is having second life somewhere in the food chain. Really? Okay. Well, that's interesting. The, uh, it, it still it, it kills me this this thought of one in five. So the kids are getting uh, many kids, not all kids, but most kids I think are having uh, availability for uh, what breakfast and lunch now. I guess at mm -hmm. schools, uh, but you have preschoolers, so that's an area, right? Mm -hmm. And I and I'm sure we can talk about that for a minute. Uh, what you do for preschoolers in terms of babies on up? Mm -hmm. you yeah, make that available too, like formula and things like that, or is that uh, yeah, and th sometimes it depends on the organization we may be working with in that local area. So, mm -hmm. for example, like here in town, Crosslines was very gracious in that they've taken on a lot of the uh, active, or I'm sorry, they took on all of the diaper bank of the Ozarks. Okay. So when an organization is specializing in something like that, we try our best to help them with that specific food product as well to make sure that we're having some access there. Um, and we also try and connect people with the Women, Infants, Children program, also known as the WIC program, to connect mm -hmm. them with those benefits available from the state as well. If you take a step back, you know, we talk about this all the time. I believe there's about 3,600 or somewhere north of 3,600 nonprofits in and around the Springfield area. That's just in Springfield. Now we're talking 20, 28 counties, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's got to be some overlap. Do you find that uh, they want to work with you or do you find sometimes there's even a little competition? Is that a fair question? I would say we're pretty blessed in the Ozarks in that for the most part, most agencies are very happy to work with us and are very eager to work with us because it's easy to see the benefits immediately when saying, oh, wow, I no longer have to worry about going to a big box store to purchase this food because Ozarks Food Harvest is going to take care of the shipping cost to me because mm -hmm. we do that absolutely free and get them on our route. And then all of the food that I'm going to be getting from them is going to either be free or it's going to be at a much, much cheaper rate than they can get from any box store. So, I mean, like, for example, right now, um, we just placed an order for about 2,500 turkeys that we're going to be subsidizing for all of our agencies to make sure, sure that that's going to be affordable for them and being able to give families that holiday meal as we head into November and December. 2,500 turkeys. That's, well, that's sure, I, I should say that's just the extra. So we had order, <laughs> already ordered two truckloads in the spring to make sure to get here to order it. And so we just sent out a call to our agencies within the past week to say, how many more do you think you can all handle? And we got an order for about 2,500 turkeys more. Wow, that's, that's, that's great news. My guest today, Jordan Browning. Jordan, the uh, Director of Communications for Ozarks Food Harvest. Uh, we're going to take a little break, pay some bills, and come back and find out what do they need? Because I think that's the big question here. What can we do to assist them? Uh, we'll be back in a moment with more on Around the Ozark Spotlight. I'm your host, Scott Meyer. See you in just a minute. Hey, everybody, it's Ethan and Sarah Forhats from your favorite podcast, Around the Ozarks in Five. I'm sure you've been wondering, how can I get even more amazing stories, events, and witty banter to start my day? Well, look no further. Here we are. Sign up for our daily newsletter. You'll have what's going on around the Ozarks 
right at your fingertips each weekday morning. Yeah, just go to AroundTheOzarks.com, click on the newsletter tab to sign up. Thanks for listening to Around the Ozarks in 5. We hope to see you in your inbox soon. Welcome back to the second half of today's Around the Ozark Spotlight. I'm your host, Scott Meyer. With me, Jordan Browning, who's the uh, Director of Communications for Ozark's Food Harvest. We learned a little bit about what the food harvest is. Now we're going to find out what do they need. You know, Jordan, if you had a crystal ball, and you've been doing this how long? You've been, you've been part of Ozark's Food Harvest how long? Uh, about 12 years now. Okay, so you got 20, and your hair is still intact, so you have to pull all your hair out. <laughs> So far, uh, so good. <laughs> well, it's got, it's got to be a little bit, you know, it, it's always interesting when you when you work with nonprofits where sometimes the finish line keeps moving. You know what I'm saying? You've mm-hmm. got some uh, like Big Brothers, Big Sisters, where you actually can touch and feel the success of, of these young people as they grow into adults. And many of them go back and help other young people. And, and, and you see a finish line uh, mm-hmm. with something like uh, food banks and, 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 and the food needs. Uh, I'm not so sure you get to see a finish line and, and you've been doing this for 12 years. Mm-hmm. What do you need to help us get from one in five to one in three or, or what have you? I mean, in your heart of hearts, what does that look like? Yeah. And I, I wish there was like a single isolated answer to that. I mean, like one of the biggest things is just making sure that folks have access to as many different resources as possible. And so, I mean, right now with what we're covering is just making sure that that base level need that people aren't going hungry in our community is covered by us. Because, you know, without that base level need taken care of, Mm -hmm. it's impossible for anyone to pursue any other things in their life as far as, you know, trying to figure out different employment, trying to figure out different housing, childcare, all of that becomes impossible without addressing the food need first. Um, But yeah, as far as like an actual need i mean the best way to give back in the community for us is with a monetary donation and the reason for that is because we have this large warehouse we're a hundred thousand square foot warehouse we have more than 15 semi trucks that are going out across 25 different routes every week and so we can take that one dollar and stretch that into ten dollars worth of groceries which is much cheaper than if anyone was trying to you know donate food from us with a big box store donation or anything like that sure yeah. And so that's what we really specialize in is trying to stretch that donation as far as it will possibly go so we can serve as many people as possible. You know, it's interesting. I used to work with a group called One Door, which is uh, a local group that helps uh, homeless. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that uh, we talked about a lot, and you just mentioned it yourself, when you see people on the street and they're looking for a, a, a cash donation, if you will, <laughs> you know, somebody mm-hmm. who's holding up a sign and says, you know, give me five dollars or whatever. Uh, the money can go so much further if it's it goes to a facility like yourself where you can make that dollar ten dollars. Mm-hmm. So instead of rolling down the window and giving one or two or three, uh, I'd like anybody who's listening or, or watching uh, today's uh, podcast to understand uh, the money can go so much further if they help out somebody like Ozark's Food Harvest. Yeah, absolutely. And we actually did research on this uh, a couple of years ago to figure out, you know, what is the amount of food that's coming through here to go out into our community? And through that, we discovered that as far as the agencies that we're servicing, the 270 different ones, 70% of the food they're distributing is coming through our food bank. So when you're making a donation through Ozark's Food Harvest, you're really not only just helping this Greene County area, but you're helping the entirety of Southwest Missouri because all of those dollars are staying right here in our community. Now, do we make that uh, plea across all, all the counties as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because and there's I mean, so much I, pressure on Springfield sometimes. It's like, oh, <laughs> you know, I, and not that that's a bad thing, but but I'm always hoping that there's a way to pull uh, uh, dollars, you know, from the entire footprint. Yeah, yeah. And that's something we try and talk about and educate folks on all the time. Uh, because, I mean, obviously, Green County is a very important place. It's one of our most mm-hmm. densely populated areas. Um, But I think it sometimes gets left out of the equation with the 27 other counties we serve is Mm -hmm. how pervasive the issue of food insecurity is across all of southwest Missouri and how difficult it becomes for people to get back on their feet when they don't have access to basic services like food. Oh, absolutely. Again. So we're talking about uh, making financial donations. How do people do that? What 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 uh, I mean, beyond where maybe they they have a company and they you know, give or, or, or project a, a, a give of five or 10 or $20,000 or whatever. How about just the regular average Joe? Uh, what, what, what can they do? How do they get there? How do they, how do they help you? 
Yeah, one of the best ways is to go to our website at ozarksfoodharvest.org. And through that, you can see all of our programs, everything that we're doing right now in the community, and just see how far your donation is going to go in the community with that as well. Um, and I, we do want to say with people too, is that if they can't have the, or they don't have the ability to donate right now, we have a lot of different opportunities for them to get involved. I mean, like I was talking about before, volunteering is so key to what we do here because we're sorting 100,000 pounds of food per week. Mm -hmm. And with our volunteer base coming in and doing that for us, that's allowing us to save money that we can then spend more on food to get people in need. So that's honestly one of the best ways to help out if you're not feeling a donation at this moment as well. Well, a donation of time, uh, obviously, in this uh, situation is probably as good as. I mean, that's. Uh, do you find a lot of retirees that help out or do you, do you find young people getting involved as well? Yeah, we have all across the spectrum. I mean, we have retirees that are incredibly dedicated. And this is a really kudos to our volunteer team is mm -hmm. we try and make sure that we are not wasting anyone's time when they're here. So when they get here for a nine to noon shift, we're going to have you busy for that three hours <laughs> sorting food. Um, and people yeah. really enjoy that, that we are not wasting their time. Um, sure. But yeah, Missouri State University, Evangeline University, they have given us so many of their students and pointed them their way. And we are so incredibly thankful that the community has been so gracious with us to give us so much help in that regard. Now, where are you located? Where where would the work be? So we are at 2810 North Cedarbrook. So that's on the north side of Springfield. Mm -hmm. um, and we try and make this process as easy as possible. So if anyone's interested in volunteering, they can do that at our website at ozarksfoodharvest.org. They can sign up for the entirety of it online. So they can register, figure out the exact time they want to come in, the exact mm -hmm. time they need to show up to where it's all as seamless as possible to get you in the door. Wow, that's, uh, that sounds almost perfect. I love that. Uh, so getting back to uh, where we go from here, and I always like to lean on my guests for, for stories. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you relate a story uh, of a situation that you've been in, in, involved in or seen where it's really touched your heart and, and kind of brings it on home? Yeah, yeah. No, th this one uh, actually just happened in September. So uh, September is Hunger Action Month where we raise money for our weekend backpack program, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of our most expensive programs because of what we talked about before, filling it with nutritionally dense food. And so we've been doing that since 2003. And we do uh, a telethon where folks call in and make donations. And we had a woman call in and pledge to donate for a full year of backpacks for a child. And she told us the reason she did this is because she received a backpack when she was a child. Mm -hmm. And she goes, that was so key for me. And it meant so much that someone in the community cared enough about me to invest in my future. And I want to do that same thing for another kid. And that, I mean, that's it right there. I mean, mm -hmm. that you're seeing that complete circle of someone else get receiving assistance and then giving it right back in their community. And that touched me incredibly. Yeah. Jordan Browning, my guest today, uh, Jordan on around the Ozark spotlight, and he is the director of communications with uh, Ozark's food harvest. Uh, that, that's a great story. Thank you. You know, that's uh, w what exactly do you find in the backpack? What, uh, what, what, what are, what are we talking about? What, what comes with that? Yeah, that's a great question. So we try and alternate it uh, every few months just to keep this, the kiddos entertained with new food. But uh, you're going to find complete meals or breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So mm -hmm. that way the kiddo, when they're leaving school on Friday, they have all of those meals covered so they can come back to school on Monday morning, happy, healthy, ready to learn. And the biggest thing is we make sure that everything that the child needs is within the bag. So all of the items from the fruit cups to the vegetable cups to the dairy items are all easy open. So they don't need anything else to get access to any of these things. And it's all shelf stable. So everything is contained within this to make sure that they have nutritionally dense and safe food, but that they don't need anyone else's help to be able to access it. So here we go. We're on our way into Christmas. Have you got everything you need or you're going to need more? <laughs> We're unfortunately going to need more. As I, as I was talking about earlier, we had a, already made about two truckloads of turkey orders earlier this year mm -hmm. to give more kind of those holiday meals to families heading into November and December. And we checked back in again with our agencies and we just had to place an order for about 2,500 more turkeys to meet that demand this year. Is there a threshold that a family has to meet uh, to be a part or is it uh, anybody that says, Hey, we, we, we just need, we need help. 
Yeah. So for, for most people, they're going to just going to be able to go to their local agency and say, Hey, I just need help. I mean, there's certain programs out there that have more income based guidelines. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the most part, all our agencies are allowing anyone in there who says, Hey, I need help. I just need a little bit of help to get by at the extra, you know, the end of the month. And honestly, that's the vast majority of people we're dealing with is they're in a problem of needing temporary help, um, just to get towards the end of the month to make sure they can make it. Sure. I just uh, keep dwelling on this idea that it's getting worse. Uh, that, that that breaks my heart. I can't imagine why it, it, it isn't getting better. Yeah, I mean, a large part of it is due to the huge host of factors we've talked about as far as, sure. you know, increasing child care expenses, increased housing expenses. And then I think almost everyone can identify with seeing the increased prices in the grocery store. Mm-hmm. All of those factors compounding together have made it really, really difficult for families to get back on their feet. And I think that's why we're seeing that increased demand, not only for our doorsteps, but on the doorsteps of all of our agencies. And the agencies uh, are finding that they uh, have a, a bigger need as well. I mean, uh, you know, because you're working with, you've only got so much that you can distribute. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I would guess uh, they're probably in pretty big need as well. Yeah, so we've we've uh, spoken with quite a few of our local agencies in the past few months, and they're seeing the exact same thing. It's just either, you know, nearly doubling in demand of people that are coming through their doors just needing food assistance. Um, yeah, and it's just the, the inability for folks to be able to recover from things that we've seen over the past two years. Does food security see an age? I mean, is this something that, that, that you know, uh, is harder on retirees than it is on, on young people? Uh, oh, I see what is, you're... yeah. I mean, you know, because I would guess food insecurity um, probably doesn't uh, it touches everyone. No, that's a that's a great question. Yeah, and um, I'm glad you touched on that with the issue of senior hunger because that's a population that really very often gets left out of the equation mm-hmm. in the regards to food insecurity. Yeah, and a lot of what we see is folks you know, end up in a situation where they may have become injured on a job or uh, uh, just don't have the ability to pay for prescriptions and pay for food with whatever social security benefits they may be receiving. So that becomes a really difficult proposition for folks in the community. And it's often not as um, attractive as donating to, you know, a weekend backpack program with children and things like that. So because of that, we have a specific senior box program, which we distribute about 4,000 boxes a month to income eligible seniors to make sure that they're not left out of that equation. Really? Now a box lasts how long? What's, what's, uh, what is that uh, made up of? It's about a roughly about a month's supply of food. And so it's trying to cover things that are typically missing from a senior's diet. So it's going to have Um, high fiber items. We're going to have fruit, vegetable items in there and protein items as well. Um, Trying to make sure that that is shelf stable as well. So that way nothing gets, you know, uh, no problems occur in the delivery process. Sure. Um, But that's a big one that we've touched on um, just to make sure that that segment's not getting left out. And that one, that's a good example of one that does have have income qualifications on it. Oh, it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, and that's when we work with the uh, state of Missouri to distribute that product as well. And that one is across our entire twenty-eight county service area that we're distributing these boxes. Well, we've only got a few minutes left. Let's uh, go back and tell folks how best to get a hold of you and and the kinds of things that you're looking for. Uh, if you want to make a cash donation, what do they need to do? Yes, if anyone's interested in making a donation or even volunteering, they can find all the information they need at OzarksFoodHarvest.org. And uh, it's simple? Yes, we make it as simple as possible <laughs> that you can donate by check, you can donate by card. And if you need to volunteer, we make that as simple as possible. You can do the entire thing online. Um, and we especially are in need of help right now as we're trying to sort more food as we head into the holiday season. Do you get any help at all from the state? Yes. So, yeah, we've got great help from the state as far as um we work with a variety of different programs as far as kind of like our after school feeding programs our summer school feeding programs. And then the U S department of agriculture has a great program uh, known as commodities. And so that's great because they will actually work with farmers across the United States to buy food product. And then they distribute it through food banks to where it's going to families in need. So it's a great win-win of not only are we supporting us farmers, but it's going directly to the population in need. 
Jordan, I want to thank you today for sharing all the information. I think uh, we hopefully opened some eyes and ears to the needs of and what the Ozarks Food Harvest does for a living. And it's uh, it's quite a job. I want to thank you all for listening today on Around the Ozark Spotlight. Also, my producers, Taylor Dempster and Jay Stevens, as well as all of you for joining us. If you happen to miss all or part of today's program, you can always find us uh, ATO Spotlight on AroundTheOzarks.com. Actually, you can Google ATO Spotlight and find it there as well. Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and X. And we also have a new app. Everybody's got to have an app, right? So we've got an app for uh, ATO, which can be found in Apple apps or Android apps. Again, I'm Scott Meyer. Remember, every day is a gift. Don't waste it. Have a great day.